All right, welcome back. So this is a problem. Sorry, let me put in the source. HMMC November General Ted from H from the most recent HMMC November, and it fixes a trapezoid ABCD. And I'm just gonna plot the points in using Cartesian coordinates because it gives it that way. So here's C. Here's B equals zero um, six. A equals three six. D equals twelve zero. And ABCD is polygon. Okay, and I want what the heck? XBC equals XDA. And I wanna maximize or minimize CX. Um, okay. Sure. Uh, I don't I don't actually know how to draw this. Um Okay, um, you know, <laughs> I I could, okay, all right, here's, here's what we're gonna do, all right? <laughs> we're gonna let E be the intersection of line C, B, and line A, D. Uh, so I have this triangle E. So I, I guess the sentiment is like B, C, and D, A, like segment B, A doesn't matter except for, um, actually, B, A just doesn't matter, right? Anyway, I, I don't, so I, we're gonna consider, I'm gonna let M be the midpoint of C, D. And I'm going to consider points uh, Y, which lie on the perpendicular bisector of BC. Uh, sorry, CD. Um, Ta-da! And the upshot of these points Y is that um, YCD equals YDC. And what we do is we're going to take the orthogonal conjugate of X of Y with respect to this triangle EBC. Um, I want to maybe... Uh, okay, I'll, I'll draw the segments, fine. I'll, I'll make the segments red, but I feel like the problem should be thought about in terms of the triangle, and like, look, points A and B don't do anything. They don't do jack shit. Um, like, they... You only... Wait, did I misread the prop? Oh, fuck. I was wondering. I was like, why Why are B and A... Okay, never mind. Uh, sorry, I misread the problem. All right, um, go me. Um... <laughs> God, reading comprehension. Jesus Christ. Okay, never mind. Um, sorry, XBC equals XDA. So forget everything I said about Y. Um, XBC. Okay, now I actually don't know how to draw the picture. Um, I'll, I'll just... Okay, here, here's how we're going to parameterize it, all right? We're going to let P be a variable point on line CD. Or really segment CD. I don't think I wanted to go outside the segment. And P will be like, we're going to require that X lies on segment BP. So basically what I'm going to... I, I'm drawing this a little backwards because I'm doing it in GeoGebra, but the idea is you start with the point X, you draw this thing, and then you look for the point such that um, like this angle is equal to that angle. And I'm picking this angle specifically so that I get the right triangle. Um, I feel like still, I still kind of feel like the point uh, A is not really doing anything. Like it's there just to constrain the, it's there to set up the direction of line DA, but otherwise I don't think it has really that relevant. Anyways, um, all right, so let's see if I can do this correctly. Uh, I need to, Rotate A, D, angle, P, B, C. Does that work? Okay. Uh, uh, the manual says the angle is supposed to... If I want to rotate around D, it goes last. Sure. Ah, oh, Shiba. Uh, P, B, C. Sh I got it the wrong way. C, B, P. Really? It's that direct? Okay, whatever. Um, okay, so let me make sure I got that right. Cool. So this is 
what it looks like, and A prime is just there for the GeoGebra part. So looks like this. I get to vary a point P, and then I take the ray here that is um, the same angle here. Shoot it. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, so and then I want to see like how close can this point get to C, and the answer is not very. Um, I also don't actually know exactly what the locus is. I almost want to say... Is it cheating if I use the locus command? Okay, I will I will try to avoid using the locus command until I get annoyed enough at the problem. But um, yeah, it, the boundary I think is a good thing to look at. So this angle here, ADC is fixed. So there's a certain point Q, which I think will probably matter, which is the point um, such that that angle does whatever it does. Uh, I don't really know how to construct it. Well, okay, I, I mean, I can force the construction. I, I don't need the midpoint M because I misread the problem and like a dummy. And I'll, um, k equals <sighs> intersect from the line through b through the rotation of the point c through the angle a, d, c about the point b against line cd. Did that compile? Oh. I, I don't know how to spell intersect. Uh, yeah, I just want to have this point marked in the picture so I can see it together with the locus. So this is the point for which you know the locus meets here. So it's sort of like it's it's moving on some curve from K to B, and I I really honestly I want the curve to be a circle, but I don't know if that's true. Uh, I mean. If it's a, even if it was a circle, though, like for the purposes of this contest, I need to actually compute like what the um, yeah. It, it feels like it should be degree two. Actually, It really should be, yeah, it should be degree two. Um, <sighs> so I have this P, maybe I wanna, I feel like I want Q as well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna extend the one through D as well. Um, Q is intersect line DX against line DC. And delete dx. We'll, we'll just. Eh. We don't have that much stuff in the diagram yet, so I'm comfortable adding that point in. Um, so, I mean, if I was a terrible person, I could just coordinate bash it at this point. Um, because what you do is you parameterize like oh like we like lines B C and D A have fixed slope. So if you rotate them by some angle theta, um, you should be you actually, you actually be able to parameterize it on um, like theta or something. Uh, however, yeah, I bet it's a circle. Uh, Twitch chat thinks it's DBE. We can find out if that's true. I, I would totally believe DBE, honestly. Yeah, there you go. Um. There you go. Yeah. We're right, guys, it's a circle. Um, okay, so actually, the fact that it lies on K is actually particularly... Or, like, DBKE is being cyclic means that we should have been able to see it from the start. 
And also, um, because of the way the angles are set up, it should be like... It's saying that BXD is fixed, I guess is the way you can think about it. And uh, what's a good way to see that it's fixed? Uh, I mean, okay, if it's true, you should just be able to add the angles. So this angle is like um, something... Oh, frick. Uh, this angle's fixed, this is fixed, this is variable, this is... If this is alpha, this is 90 minus alpha. Um, oh, actually, no, I should just be adding B and D. Never mind, this is literally 90 minus alpha plus alpha. Okay, cool. All right, it's cyclic, definitely cyclic. Uh, yeah! All right, yeah, okay, it's cyclic because B and D literally add up to 180. Beautiful. Um, okay, so it lies on the circle. Amazing. Now we know the entire locus. Um, and we need to... DB and E are explicit pairs. Um, e is in fact at 0, 0,8. And so you can compute the circum, center, and thing, whatever. I don't know. K is... yeah. Okay, actually this computation is clear. So the point K is pretty useful because K is 4, 0. And that lets you compute the circumcenter directly just by. In fact, the circumcenter is. Um, I'll tell you what the circumcenter is. So D is 12, this is 4, so this average is 8. So the circumcenter is at 8, 7, and the radius is. Um, whatever the distance from 8, 7 to any of these points is. Uh, <laughs> fuck, calculation. Is it? Root 65? I think. Think. Yeah, I think it's root sixty-five. Uh. So yeah, eight comma seven is at the distance of root one hundred thirteen from C. The radius is root sixty-five, so our answer should be root one hundred thirteen minus root sixty-five. Um, and we're fine. Uh, that, that was actually surprisingly clean. I actually did not expect to be able to do the calculation with no paper, but um, the coordinates are really well chosen, I have to say. So good job to the problem setter for making my life easy. <laughs> uh, oh, that's very cute. Okay. Um, yeah, this is the kind of problem I would really like to see on the Amy. It's just like, you do a bit of angle trace and then you do... Like, the calculation is not horrendous, if you do it correctly. 